Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for inviting me to give a talk. I, uh, my name is Kevin Hannon, and I'm a full stack developer at Axel Informatics, and my client is the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences, and we are in the information technology research branch. Um, I am today going to talk to you about running common workflow language across different computational engines. So to kind of give you a brief introduction of who Axel is, we are, are currently on a collaborative project with NIH and the National and NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And what we are trying, we are currently building an image processing platform that allows for building scalable image processing solutions. Uh, and our major client of that project is NCATS, which they are a center at the National Institute of Health focused on translational science and finding pain points it takes from clinical research all the way to releasing uh, research into the medical community. So some of the areas they found is a pain point is uh, image processing and making sure that you can scale your images for large data. And also another area is building computational molecular modeling uh, solutions so that people can keep like reproducibility and reusing existing workflows. These are all interested in a very a lot of different scientific areas. So that is uh, us. Uh, we are this is our team. We are a mix of software engineers, data scientists, and we have uh, that's a lot of our experience. Uh, and so, kind of to give you a, a quick rundown of what uh, what our goal for our compute platform is like at NIH, we are very interested in building a generic computational platform that can allow our researchers to run uh, scientific workflows in, a, in various domains. Currently, we found that a lot of platforms can be very specialized into genomics or uh, those types of areas. And we want to be able to support both molecular modeling image processing and genomics using the same platform and not and not tie into a particular area. Uh, also, we there is an interest at NIH in be able to support a wide range of scientists and users. We have very we have a large range of users at NIH that range from computational scientists who are running molecular modeling every day and they are writing code every day and they are very comfortable command line Linux and submitting workflows into HPC. Uh, but we also want to support a wet lab scientist who who wants to be able to run a an image calculation without knowing where without knowing how to submit calculations to HPC clusters. Uh, and so we would like to have an, make sure our application is API driven so we can integrate with a front end application that can generate workflows. Uh, we also there is a big interest in the IT field of building cloud native solutions. What that really means is a lot of times it can mean you want an application built on top of Kubernetes, typically you use microservices architecture, you, are AP, you have APIs that connect to different services, and you are also usually container based if you're running on top of Kubernetes, and you're also cloud vendor neutral. Uh, but once you build a cloud native application, how do you tie that into running on HPC cluster? That is actually an interesting problem that we are focused on solving because the cloud has various ways of orchestrating workflows. So does HPC, but there's not as much effort to uh, enable interoperability between the two. Uh, we are we want a truly open source platform that is both that allows people to fork the code, make changes, update issues, and kind of want to provide something that provides value for the community as a whole, and we can keep encouraging other developers. We want. Uh, we also are using first. Our first class citizen is CWL. Our APIs that take common workflow language. That is a core uh, idea that we have wanted. Uh, so that is that's the, the drivers. Uh, so in general, sorry, the drivers of this project. So again, uh, to reiterate a very important point, the common workflow language 
when you want to work with compute, you can create a workflow using CWL, and then you can be able to submit it to our APIs. I will demo our APIs later at the end of this talk, and you can kind of see how CWL plays a prominent role. But in general, Compute APIs is similar to a workflow execution service from the CWL community. It is a abstract API, and the implementation details are done underneath our drivers. Our drivers are uh, drivers. We have two main drivers that we've implemented so far. We have the Toil driver and the Argo driver. So what those uh, Toil is a Python-based workflow orchestration. Uh, like our application that I have, I have also contributed a few PRs to support Toil in the context of my work. Uh, but in general, one of our main interests for Toil is they provide a nice ability to add or adapt new schedulers such as Slurm, Grid Engine, or HT Condor. These three are actually requested by our clients at NIH because they are existing on-prem uh, data centers that they use at NIH, and we would like to be able to support on-prem, and also there's the supercomputers at NIH, and so that is our hope. Oh, that is why we're using Toil as our uh, HPC job scheduler. Or, sorry, yeah, our HPC driver, and then Argo is uh, a cloud-native computing foundation app. Uh, project. It is an incubating project in that area, and it is its own workflow language uh, specified with YAML. And uh, in order to, in the Argo driver, one of the core functionality of that driver is to take CWL and then convert it into the Argo syntax and then submit workflows to Argo, which will then in turn run them on top of Kubernetes as containerized jobs. So, uh, Step one, how do you actually use the compute APIs? Uh, what it really is, is uh, you can upload a plugin, whether or not it's our specialized plugin, interoperable plugin spec that we will talk about in future work. It is a, or you can upload a command line tool, and then you can upload that to a plugin database, and then now it is stored uh, in our database. So then two, once you have a plugin, a command line tool, you now can chain those plugins together to create a workflow, and then you are able to submit that workflow to a driver, which in turn submits it to a new computational engine. Uh, once you have a workflow, the next step is actually be able to use our API endpoints to monitor the execution of a workflow, whether or not it's the individual steps of a workflow, the overall status, or getting the outputs and logs, or even looking at the real-time logs while the workflow is running for making sure your job is doing what you think it's doing. So what, what have we done so far in compute? Well, we have created a, sorry, we have created a plugin representation for command line tools, uh, and then you can upload that and it generates a new command line tool. We allow monitoring of, of running workflows in both our Toil and Argo drivers, and we also provide real-time logging. Uh, you can also create pipelines from existing workflows, and then we also allow the ability for scattering for both Argo and our Toil drivers, which means horizontally scaling a workflow. We also provide abstraction for new HPC schedulers. So what is what are we plan to do in 2022? Well, we want to release an open. We want to release this entire project as open source. That is a major goal. We are not trying to release this. Yeah, we want to release it as an open source project. Uh, we have hardware requirements, which are CPU, memory, disk, and GPU. Like we want to be able to run GPUs. We want to be able to take plugin or take workflows that need a GPU and run them in both Argo and our HPC environments and schedule those jobs accordingly. Uh, we want to support conditional workflows, uh, pausing and resuming workflows. I want to be able to schedule workflows to run on a reoccurring basis. And then we also want to provide extensibility for new drivers. All right, and now that concludes the first part of my talk. And now I would like to switch to the demo part. So in general, what I want to show is uh, I have a series of open API specifications for workflows. And so you can see I have, as I talked earlier, the, the three here are workflow execution uh, parts of a workflow. We have a pause and restart, or sorry, pause, 
uh, and restart are no are not implemented yet. Uh, we also have we have resubmitting a workflow, which can take an existing workflow and then rerun it. Uh, status and then stop. We also implemented stop in both Toil and Argo. Uh, and then you also the way you can submit a new workflow is uh, you can post a workflow and this giving a CWL workflow. You can now submit it. I will just show you an existing workflow. So going here, you can see here is a workflow, uh, and then uh, you can grab from the database the definition of this workflow. So uh, you can see here, this is a this is a Slurm workflow. It is uh, a file conversion one in image processing, and it takes a series of inputs and outputs, and this is all valid CWL. And uh, yeah, so this is a scatter job. So now, how does this? How do you? How can you use our actual endpoints? Well, you can take that object ID, and then you can run a simple endpoint. You can run these rest calls and then you can get in the case of jobs you get the individual steps of a workflow and then you can view inputs and outputs of a workflow and you get uh you get information like that uh yeah so then uh, also for logs we have uh you can view the the, the standard out and standard error of your plugin and depending i don't won't show it now but if a plugin was actually running well, it's where, if a workflow is actually running, you can get the location where the logs are being written to in real time. So if you're on your cluster, you could you could tail those logs and get an idea of how they're how they're running. Uh, and so that is for our toil driver. Uh, oh, and the last step is that you can see here when you actually run these jobs uh, endpoints, you are, they're actually calling out to the Slurm CLI to get the final status from the actual the source of truth. In this case, is Slurm. And this kind of this allows us to uh, get information about the jobs from Slurm. So then now we have uh, Argo. I won't show you the same thing for Argo because it looks exactly the same. But I can just show you that when we submit a workflow from CWL, we are actually converting into the Argo YAML syntax. And the first step that we have to do is uh, Argo takes a DAG that that tells you which jobs it, a workflow is going to create, and in this case, I am using this with item syntax, and then this here uh, file pattern and value. This is actually saying to loop over each element of this array and call this plugin template with these about with these parameters. So then, uh, templates is uh, how Argo represents containers. In this case, so you can see here, this owing into our plugin is a container. It takes it's a Python application, and it takes a, a variety of inputs, and then uh, specifies those inputs. This uh, concludes the part of my talk. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for listening, and please ask questions if you have them at the Q and A.